Well, welcome everybody to another great interview with a great artist with Steve Prescott here, another wonderful Magic the Gathering artist. Um, as you know, my my thing is to interview artists that are involved in the process of creating art for Magic the Gathering um, and help us get to know them a little bit better. So Steve, um, one of the first things I'd like to start out doing is just asking you, what was your pathway into getting into illustration and art? Uh, my pathway was just being born, I think. Because <laughs> that's, <laughs> okay. that's really like all I did for the most part. I mean, yeah. uh, like but even, up yeah, stuff. yeah, I mean, that was my thing that I did. I was known as the kid that drew the dinosaurs and race cars and all that stuff. Okay. And, but even in high school, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be an artist. Like, I just kind of was this whatever, rolling with the waves wherever it took mm -hmm. me. So it wasn't until like the end of high school when I was like, no, nah, I'm going to make art for my career. Okay. But even then, like, I, I was only just starting to narrow it down. Uh, in college, you know, I was into comic books and into movies, so I was like picking away at those two things. So, like, getting my way into gaming artwork wasn't until like the last semester that I was in college, and I kind of fell into a job working on a role-playing game that did werewolves and vampires. Oh. Where it was White Wolf. White Wolf. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's how well, that's know how that I started. Is. Like, and I never would have known that like before uh, an art director from White Wolf came to my school to talk to you know the illustration majors but yeah. before then gaming wasn't even on my radar like I wasn't huh. really into fantasy that much other than a few movies or anything so it was mostly comics and, and movies. yes yeah what were some of your early influences that you really like comic books uh, it was when so I fell in love with movies like when aliens and predator came oh, out like great. you know yeah. mid to late 80s okay. Short and so get to the top of yeah. And that was, my, I should have worn that shirt today. Right? Okay. Uh, that was my gateway into comics. Like before okay. then, I knew about them, but I wasn't a superhero follower or anything. But Dark Horse started making comics of those, of those movies, like adaptations and whatever subsequent chapters, what the aliens and predators are doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like, my earliest influences were like Chris Warner and uh, Phil Noir, whatever I think his name and a few of the other artists that were drawing those monsters like Terminator and all that stuff. And that, that kind of led me into other Dark Horse stuff, so I kind of, I then, you know, was exposed to Mike Mignola's work. Like, he did the Dracula adaptation. I don't know if that was through Dark Horse, but I saw that, you know, mm -hmm. about the movie, the Francis Ford Coppola movie. Yeah. And it was beautiful, and I was like, this guy is awesome. And that, like, kind of, that set me up to be a fairly skilled inker, you know, drawer and composer for doing uh, the, work, the White Wolf and sure. those uh, black and white illustrations. Because mm -hmm. I, I poured over his work and Hellboy had just come out too and so I was starting to get a feel for like structuring panels and just like action poses and stuff, mostly from Mignola's work I'd say. Like yeah. he's probably the single biggest he's a big influence. influence. Yeah. Yeah. A Even when I started painting, like I was still like looking at his stuff just for like how he how he kind of overlaps giant shapes and like composes an image with just like the simplest shapes and kind of sure. now I'm in that super detail, I'm in a much more detail yeah. than he is. Sure. But that, I, that was kind of my basis that I went off of. And I didn't try to copy him, but I liked the way that he inked and composed. So that was my now, did, big did you then. do any formal schooling for art? Yeah, I went to Columbus College of Art and Design for four and a half years. That's, yeah, that was in the early 90s. But yeah. So you're from the Columbus area? Originally from northeastern Ohio okay. by Cleveland and came to Columbus for the school. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, while you were at school, did that kind of, all those influences that you were talking about, is that one that happened or did it kind of come yeah, over time? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, obviously I had influences, you know, earlier in my life, whatever, reading Ranger Rick magazines and stuff like that, you know, like, <laughs> sure. and whatever, G.I. Joe cartoons and so, and like Robotech, that was like my little flavor of anime. So I had like those influences for art, we're all kind of feeding, but really it was when I saw those movies that I mentioned before when I really started like focusing and drawing. Like I want to, I want to be the best guy that draws predators or whatever. Sure. But yeah, it was. I think that was when I started to get a more sophisticated sense for like influences in college. Right, like that opened my eyes to like more of the people that were doing stuff that like drawing the stuff that I liked, doing kind of the jobs that I liked, like comic book work or 
whatever FX work for for movies. And that's when I really like, was consciously like, you know, studying their work and like seeing what their influences were and how their minds work and like their creative impulses and stuff. That's when I start to process it better, I'd say. Okay. Um, so your movie influences, comic books, and then you get the job with White Wolf. How, how long were you there? Um, so I was freelancing with them through the early 2000s. They were my sole income source, but for a while they were. Like the first uh, maybe two or three years out of college, I worked at an art material store for a little bit. That was like my steady income, but even after a year, I was like, I can make more money freelancing, sure. even with you know fairly low pay black and white work. Mm -hmm. It was mostly White Wolf. Then I started to do shadow run stuff that was more white, more uh, black and white work. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it's cyberpunk type stuff. So it's a good like mix of flavors that I was having. Yeah, give you some other areas yeah. to focus. You know, gain yeah, and I filled in the cracks with other little jobs. But those two, those two lines of uh, pro or product lines, they kind of carried me through the early two thousands, and that's when I started to do branch out, and that's when I got into uh, doing D and D and got into the Wizards of the Coast mix. Okay. Yeah. So, how were you able to get your first job with White with White Wolf? Let's say that five times. <laughs> um, the uh, the art director at the time, his name's Larry Snelly, and he he came and did just a presentation on his business and what he does for White Wolf and all that. And again, like I had never heard of White Wolf yeah. before. I'd heard of Dungeons and Dragons, and that was about the only role playing game I'd ever heard of. Right. I'd heard of Magic the Gathering too because that came out shortly before I, I left, you know, yeah, left or graduated. Yeah. Um, but that was like off the radar too because those were those were big league artists. Like, <laughs> um, sure. But yeah, he he and he was looking at portfolios oh. after you know after his presentation and he mm -hmm. saw my stuff and then I had kind of curated a little bit of stuff for what they do. So I mm -hmm. guess that was the smart part. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll just put black and white pen and ink stuff. I handle it fairly well. I had one like drawing that was a werewolf, I think, and I inked it up just for that. Like, just you know, I like drawing things with teeth and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and he liked it. He said, "Yeah, I think we can use you." And I can't remember how long it was. I mean, in my head, it was like a month later. I was doing work for them. It might have been longer than that, but you know, for the sake of exaggeration, <laughs> we'll yeah. say we'll say <laughs> a month later I was doing artwork <laughs> professionally. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, living the dream, I'm sure. Um, so. You mentioned that you went from there to Shadowrun, early 2000s, and then was introduced to D&D and Magic, which mm -hmm. came first, D&D and D&D. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had to cut my teeth for a while, because even, I had done some color work for, for uh, White Wolf a little bit mm -hmm. here and there, like they had a vampire card game. And I had done a few, uh, they had like full color sequential art stories at the beginning yeah. of their manuals and stuff. So I had, I had done some color work, but really I was pretty stunted on, on doing color like I was painting with acrylics but mediocre like I still had, didn't have a handle on like how I like to use it I just knew it, there was something there and so I got work for D&D &D, uh, doing a Forgotten Realms book I think and so that was my first foray when I look back at that like the first like that job and I think maybe the next job I was like they like really dull like I didn't know how to handle the acrylics yet like I had tightened up because this was yeah. This is a bigger deal, right? Sure. I'm working on D and D. This is you know a worldwide known game. <laughs> yeah. Not, more and nothing against that. White Wolf, but like D and D was no White Wolf. Yeah, yeah. D and D was a different beast. And so I like I wasn't choking, but I was like I gotta make these great. But at the same time, I was I was still yeah I was still cutting my teeth on painting. So they're yeah. pretty raw. Yeah. They're pretty kind of shabby when I look back. Like they're they're tightly done, but they're all dull and the colors are all grayed out and crappy. Well, you know, it, it's a common theme I see with artists that when they first start in anything, whether it would yeah. have been White Wolf or their early stuff that you're not as proud of, you know, yeah. as you grow and, and become better, and yeah. you get better. That's yeah, just absolutely. like anything, right? Yep. And so um, that, that's what happened. Like, I t it took me a while, like, to do multiple projects with, with Dungeons and Dragons, and thankfully they kept me on. Not that I was, like, Making a mess of things with sure. with underwhelming artwork. I was doing all right, but I was yeah. still figuring myself out, and yeah. I needed a few years there before I ended up, you know, getting magic work. Okay. Um, do you remember what the first assignment you did for magic was? 
I know close to what it, I'm not sure because it, it was a while ago, but I'm pretty sure it was a Body Double and Malik of the Dawn. Okay. And Merfolk Thaumaturgist, however you pronounce that. Yeah. Those kind of, I got all three of those, I think, right at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I remember having to finish two of them, at least Malik of the Dawn, and maybe it was Body Double. I had to it, like I got those assignments, was painting them, and then mm -hmm. like shortly after I got the assignments, they invited me out to Wizards to work on Lorwyn concepting. Oh wow! And I was like, well, I guess I'm traveling with my unfinished paintings, <laughs> <laughs> and so wow. I finished those in the hotel by Wizards of the Coast during wow. the evenings, and went over to Wizards during the day and worked on concept oh, designs. On so yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, what was your so? The reason I asked that in part is not only to find out, but also to kind of get an idea of your process like how do you okay. go through getting the assignment and then coming up with some concepts submitting those I mean how, what does that process look like for for magic especially like the the tone of the image the mood is mm -hmm. kind of it's one of the more important things I mean, obviously the subject matter matter has to uh, fit the mechanic of the game or what right. they need the card to do but a lot of times the selling point is the mood like this is a somber mood, or like this is an intense, like this guy's filled with rage, or whatever. This, he's, right. you know, this warrior is going psycho. Right. So I get an idea when I get a description for an image. I get an idea for like the gist of what I have to do here. Like, I don't picture it in detail. Like I'm not like the warrior is going to have his arm back here. The you know the the magic's going to be shooting violently off the screen. I don't like picture it in detail. Because I like to work that out as I'm like starting to do the sketches, uh, but I know like the the mood that I want to get. Like, is this an aggressive scene? Is it a, a like a mysterious scene that has you know obscured background because of smoke or something like that? Mm -hmm. And that's what I shoot for. Like, I want to make sure that the gesture of the if there's like a humanoid you know figure in it, that gesture fits the mood, the background, and, the, and like I start to picture. You know what kind of colors would work well in this scene, like to to also fit that mood and kind of sell the the point. And unless I get an idea, and this, by the way, doesn't happen in like three days. I don't just like sit like, what <laughs> would the mood be here? I can imagine clouds popping above. You know, it's head. it's kind of like when you're reading, you get an idea for a scene with yeah. like they don't tell you yeah. in super detail what's going on, but you you picture like, yeah, leave some to imagine. You can get the gist from the dialogue in a book or whatever, like you know, the, the mood of the scene. So that's what I do when I read it. Sure. And then I start with the sketches and try to like, get the facial expression is usually like a key, like that's a focal point, or if it's just the gesture of the, the figure, the creature, whatever. I try to get those nailed down in like little thumbnails and work out like just angles and weird stuff. And You know, after that I kind of blow it up and get the frame that I have to put it in and just kind of move it around to see like what forms a good Does that composition. Sound digitally? Usually digitally. I mean, sometimes I'm in my sketchbook, like if I draw, like say it's a creature card, sure. and I'll just try to get that pose right for the creature, and sometimes I'll realize that like if I tilt the creature just a little bit, you know, that fits the frame better, or oh, like yeah. I like that the head is higher than the horizon line or something. So I'll like draw, I'll draw a frame around a sketch like at weird cockeyed angles just okay. to picture like what it would just look like. Idea. But yeah, usually it's a digital thing. If I'm around the computer and you know, can get it in there sure. and then just move it around. Do you have a certain number of sketches you like to submit to? Uh, just to Usually it's one sketch. that I'll submit like for oh. approval. Okay. Um, every once in a while I'll give them two or three. Or if, or if I'm a little bit concerned about like is this, like if I'm not quite clear on like this is exactly what they want, like I'll send them a couple uh, thumbnails and be like this is the right direction, right? Okay. I don't really like to do that because I know that the art directors are super busy, like they have, whatever, 100 yeah. jobs at any given time to sure. do, so I don't want to give them like extra work to do and like hold my hand, like I've been doing this for 210 cards or whatever it yeah. is now, so like I kind of know like what they want for the most part, and yeah, yeah I'll, just, I'll give them one or two sketches at the most sometimes, but usually like I, I kind of focus in stubbornly I'm like this is the one that I'm gonna make work <laughs> yeah. I'll send that off. Do they ever come back and say we want this adjusted or changed? Or they have but not in a while. No. And that sure. probably is a lot of just experience like I sure. know the game yeah not from a player standpoint but I know what I know what my art directors are looking for. Right. Most of the art directors I've worked with for years and years I know them personally I know what they want 
Mm -hmm. I know what I want to get out of a piece that'll make me enthusiastic about it. And I know just by the breakdown of the, the description of the piece and the mood, like what needs to be in there. I can, I can tell like, even though I might not know exactly what the car does, I know that certain things are key to the mechanic, you know, and I just make sure that that works. Okay. Yeah. Well, going back to what you said that, I mean, early on, it sounds like you were, you were signed and then immediately invited to, to work on the Lord concept. That, mm -hmm. That's actually pretty crazy, don't you think? What, yeah. what was that experience like? It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> At that point in time, they hadn't, like, I think this was the first, no, it wasn't the first time they brought people out, because I think they had people out for Ravnica, maybe. Yeah. I've um, seen concept art from yeah. uh, older sets, too. I so, I mean, it, it, it was Lorewind, so I think they were dabbling in, like, a different direction. <coughs> Again, yeah. I'm not sure with, like, the whole lore and, like, how they were, you know, creatively expanding the brand at all, but yeah. they brought in just me and two other artists, and I think we even, like, overlapped like, I want to, because Warren Mayhe mm -hmm. and uh, Omar Rayan, those were yeah. the other two artists. Omar. And the in-house artist at the time was Jeremy Jarvis, so he was also mm -hmm. part of the team. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we were, and I, I don't think Omar and and Warren were there at the same time. I want to say that one had, could only come out for a week and the other could come out for the second week or two or whatever. So you didn't really collaborate with them directly? I mean, yeah, we I worked directly with them, but not like all three of us oh, at once, you know okay. I mean? So there, it, we were kind of staggered, but but it was it was awesome. Like I had been out there at Wizards. I did concept design for Eberron a few oh, years earlier than that. Indeed. Yeah, like two thousand three. So like that experience was fantastic too. Okay. So they had already brought you out yeah. previously for other. Yeah, things. but that was only. I think that might have been only for a week. But that was fresh for me. Like I'm working with other artists. I, I haven't yeah. done this. I didn't even do that in school. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, think, so when they brought me out for Magic for for doing Lorwyn and Morning Tide and Even Tide. Like that was like, we had specifics to work on. Eberron was a little bit looser. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't so much anything goes, but I felt like almost anything goes. And they're mm -hmm. just like, we'll use this and this will be awesome. Magic was a little bit more refined in what they needed because they needed to fill those factions and like yeah, you need kid, magic kid, users, yeah. Things. Which was fine, I'm not saying like, I don't like borders. I actually like when there's parameters to work with them. Sure. Like, this is my playground. So it was, it was awesome in that respect and it was longer. I met even more people while I was out there and made more friends. So that's great. Right. Every every experience I've had out there has been fantastic doing concept yeah. designs, and that was just the first. So like, special place in my heart kind of deal. Where what other ones have you worked on? I worked on so after Lorwyn I did Innistrad, then I did Theros, the and then, Theros. Yeah, and uh, I can't remember which was next. It was either Ixalan or. Shadows over Innistrad, like the second I think Shadows over Innistrad. Was Maybe the that was one. it. Yeah. yeah. So we worked on that, and you were on Ixalan. Ixalan as well. Okay. And then this latest one, last year, mm -hmm. that I worked on. I don't. I don't think I can talk about it. So I'm not going oh, yeah. to. Oh don't, don't violate any <laughs> Like I don't even know if any like spec is floated out yeah, there. Yeah, so we don't. I mean, yeah. I think the next set's uh, Behemoths or something like that. I forget. The yeah. Fact. So I did yeah, the, that one. Like I'm done one that's up and coming. Too. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure when that'll come out. Probably at the end of the year, or yeah, fall-ish, yeah. maybe. Something yeah, like I that. think they've said the names of the upcoming sets. I think we returned it to the name. Yeah, that's fine. Don't don't buy it in the Indies. <laughs> so we brought a couple pieces. Um, this one I'm I'm a big fan of. What was this done for? So this, so this is one of these graphic planeswalkers that I worked on. Uh -huh. And when I got commissioned for these, they weren't for card art at the oh. point in time. They were like multi-use uh, okay. promotional pieces, basically. But then they ended up going on the yeah, SDC like later. promos, right? Yeah, so originals. yeah, I, I approached them. I didn't approach them creatively mm -hmm. that, you know, too much differently than I would have if they were like, we need these for cards. But like, sure. as far as like making the originals, like I was just kind of like, it was more mechanical than it was like, I'm gonna make a beautiful original piece of artwork. It was a lot of like tinkering with like black and white and moving it around like on traditional and then I moved it to digital and I worked really closely with my art director, Matt Cavada, yeah. at the time. And we were like back and forth. And it was an awesome process, like just picking out like how many how many details can we push out of it or add to it, like how many like we don't rely on line work at all and it is just shapes, like how many areas can we really blow out and still keep the form and still say that, uh, like, you can still see his arm here and you can yeah. tell that 
that's the texture of his uniform, right. and you don't need to show like wrinkles in the pants or you yeah, know, it's almost put a little bit of highlight. Like, almost like a Batman feel to his cape. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we were just we're playing with shapes and like yeah. playing with you know push and pull on a lot of the details and like how much information we really need to right. put in this piece before it gets you know too detailed. Well, and I think Jason Chan introduced this type of glyph or something around it initially with his. Jace the Mind Sculptor or something mm -hmm. kind of has that feel to it. Too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and th those are some of my favorite Planeswalkers. Yeah. That, that was the first year I was able to attend San Diego Comic Con and to be able to oh, yeah. get those was super oh, nice. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was so, fun. Yeah. And yeah, they told me like down the road, they're like, we're going to use these on these cards and, uh, you know, compensated me with, with like a new contract. Like we were just going to give you this oh. more to kind of cut the difference here, but it was cool. That's cool. Like, because I'm, I'm not a planeswalker artist, you know, they don't well, you come know, for me except for. Obviously, like, if it's you really are. Special. You've done five of them at least. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and then this is a, I'm sure, a fan favorite. Maybe tell us a little bit. Who likes about... flying cats? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a question to ask you about yeah, it specifically, ahead. but, well, before we do that, yeah. tell me a little bit about your process in this. I mean, you, you don't see a lot of detail in the card. This old man. It's yeah, it's a little bit dark here. They, actually, yeah. the original is a little bit lighter. Yeah. It's just a hard, like a difficult. It's just so hard thing. to see on something you know, this yeah. big. Like, yeah, but I mean, this them. card is like people ask me, like, what were your thoughts going into this? Right. Like, and this is this is pretty much straight up what they asked for in, ah, in the commission. Okay. I mean, it wasn't like detailed like paragraphs. Mm -hmm. It was like we need a cat jumping off of the tower <laughs> after a bird. It has you know, glowing blue magical wings and there's a wizard awesome. in the background, yeah. like, concerned about this because yeah, he's, Kumba. yeah, the, I mean, the mood for this piece is, what have I done? I've ruined the ecosystem. Oh, right, right, yeah. So, like, <laughs> and, you know, then I put it in the right setting, the, the Dominaria setting. So yeah. it's all, like, everything there is pretty much described. I just, like, ran it through my filter on what I wanted it to look like. Okay. And I totally, like, as soon as I read the description, I knew exactly what I wanted. <laughs> The cat to look like because I've, I've lived with cats for the better sure. part of my life. I know yeah. what they look like when they're jumping after stuff. Yeah, like, you know, like well, you could approach this differently, obviously. You can you could have the cat looking aggressive with its mouth open and teeth and like it's all claws and like it, mm. it could ravage something, but that's not how I've ever seen a cat jump. Like they jump and they look like they're insane like this, right? <laughs> like they have their head back and their eyes yeah. are like way so wide. So focused. And, and especially really. if they're like jumping after a string. Right. That you're yeah. running by them, they're like contouring through the right, air yeah, to try and catch it. All the time. And so I was like, I know exactly. So I just, I think I Google image searched uh, leaping cat or something uh, like okay. that. And just, it was like the fourth picture was almost spot on. Like I changed the, the pivot of the, the, the tail was hooked the other way and the pivot of the uh, pelvis okay. area was a little bit turned. Uh -huh. So I straightened it out just for the composition. But the cat face and the arm position, I was like, that is exactly the look that I want this cat <laughs> right. to have in the face, like just the insanity cat. Well, I, I love the, the bird doesn't really look like it's even concerned. Yeah. It's just kind of like, no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of the most fun Im images in, in the game. Yeah. So. I gotta ask, are you gonna get this in frame? Because recently you posted <laughs> a, an auction and this, this painting's in the background and that garnered the question, Will this ever be framed? Yeah, if I decide that I'll sit on it longer, I'll probably okay. frame it just so it's you know not just sitting on. Is it. there a hope it might come to auction? Then? Yeah, we'll we'll see. Okay, okay. And eventually, right? I'll yeah. I want to take a vacation. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure. <laughs> or I want to like pad popular. a retirement account or something. Right. Yeah, it'll be a popular one. So that's great. Yeah. Well, moving on, and I know your time's valuable, and yeah. we've got a magic fest going on. Um, I just wanted to end kind of with this question that I, I try to ask every artist. Yeah. What would be your advice to someone looking to get into this industry? Into the industry or into magic? Into this industry in general. And maybe um, into magic too. I mean, obviously there's a bunch of different ways you can go. Like if you're talking about like freelancing, mm -hmm. like, you know, being self-employed and dabbling in different, you know, products like magic or D&D &D and Hearthstone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be ready for the lifestyle of being a self-employed artist. Like it's it's a huge deal. You got to have a lot of uh, discipline on how to run your run your life, basically, because it's sure. it, it is it'll be your life. Like, and it'll want to creep into like every aspect of your life, and you kind of have to rein it in. So like that's a whole that's like a two-hour interview that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we could talk about well, that. Yeah, and, like and I understand. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we could talk about this stuff all day. I mean, yeah, I, I love 
chatting about this, but yeah. Just as far as skills, and we'll, for, the, for the sake of this interview, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. narrow it down to the actual, like, you know, tangible, like, yeah. the skill sets that you need. And I say, like, drawing is the most important thing. Like, I went in being able to draw, and I think my art, direct, not being able to draw like a master, I'm saying, like, that was my strength. Sure. Uh, and I think my art directors, my, especially the early ones that I worked on, or worked with, they recognized that I had a flair for drawing and like I brought a certain energy and character to the artwork. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed me to like, like I said earlier, like cut my teeth and, and like figure out what kind of techniques and how to use acrylic until like I was able to use acrylic quite proficiently, right? Sure. So like, I don't think I could do that the other way. I think if I had mediocre drawings and I was still like working out how to draw, but I was really fantastic at oil or acrylic, I don't think it works the other way. I think. You gotta be able to describe a scene that you're being given. You know, someone's gonna tell you what you need to draw, basically, or what you need to illustrate, and you need to be able to draw that. So, like, drawing is the most important, and, and breaking that down even further, like, almost every fantasy art job, you're gonna need to obviously know how to draw humans, but like, draw all the animals, basically, like, know the forms and how they move on a dog or an eagle or a horse or a snake or whatever because all those will come into play you'll eventually you'll get a creature and probably sooner than later and it'll be like it has eagle wings or it's you know <laughs> like this this, one, this warrior's like, riding a horse yeah. or a pegasus or something or right. you know this thing has snake arms and you know all the like the details that go into lizards and uh, uh, snake scales and stuff like that you'll apply that to dragons and stuff so it's it's important to be able to draw as much as you can, but especially like human and animal figures, like really, really comes yeah. in handy, and it'll forever come in handy as long as you're doing fantasy artwork. Yeah, hydras come out. I mean, there's a myriad of them. Exactly, like an yeah, antlers, like all sorts of horns and stuff. Just, <laughs> just knowing how horns grow and how they yeah. work, like there's all sorts of nuance that comes with doing that a lot. Sure. So if you're trying to get into the industry like go to the zoo or pick up a bunch of pictures off of, you know, image searching and just sort of draw animals from pictures from life and, and start to get a feel for that. Like the better you are at that, the easier you can combine them, make weird monsters, draw figures, draw figures in clothes, armor, all that stuff. Oh well. Yep. Great. Well thank you for your time, Steve. We really yeah. appreciate your yeah. willingness to, to meet and chat a little bit. Thank you.